Hello everyone. A teacher once noticed during a lesson that one of his students, Johnny, was daydreaming. So to get his attention, she called out, Johnny, can you guess how old I am? Without hesitation, Johnny replied, 34. Well, that's not far from my actual age. But tell me, how did you guess it right? The teacher asked. Oh, it is very simple. My big sister is 17 and she is only half crazy, Johnny said. Friends, when a young man named John appeared in the wilderness near the Jordan River, wearing garments made of camel's hair, eating locusts and wild honey, and calling to people to prepare the way of the Lord by turning away from sin and being baptized is a symbol of repentance. As we heard from the Gospel of Mark last week, some people thought that he was a bit crazy. Others considered him a holy man. A large number of people were going out to him to be baptized. The Jewish leaders in Jerusalem who were disturbed by John's preaching and perhaps were also quite jealous of his increasing popularity, sent some priests to ask John about his identity and credentials. Apparently, John was asked if he were the Christ, or he sensed that it was implicitly behind their question, Who are you? He denied being the Christ. Then he was asked specifically if he were Elijah, and he replied that he was not. Friends, there were several reasons why the people thought that John was Elijah. 1. John's clothing was similar to Elijah, the prophet and miracle worker, who had lived in the northern kingdom of Israel and had mightily opposed the Baal worshippers on Mount Carmel during the reign of King Ahab. This was about 900 years before Christ. 2. About 400 years before Christ, the prophet Malachi had predicted that the prophet Elijah would return before the day of the Lord, which was commonly understood as the coming of the Messiah. 3. Many of the scribes and common people popularly believed that Elijah did not die, but rather he was taken into the sky by a whirlwind after passing his mantle to Elisha, his successor and might well return in exactly the same manner that he ascended on a chariot of fire before the Messiah's arrival. 4. The angel Gabriel had told Zechariah at the birth of his son John that he would fulfill the prophecy of Malachi, stating that he would go before the Lord in the spirit and power of Elijah. 5. Once, Jesus had also identified John as Elijah. Speaking very highly of John, Jesus said to the crowd, If you are willing to accept it, he is Elijah who is to come. Another time when Jesus was talking to the disciples, he said, Elijah has already come and did not recognize him, but did to him whatever they pleased. So also will the Son of Man suffer at their hands. Then the disciples understood that he was speaking to them of John the Baptist. Friends, despite several positive indications in the Bible that suggest John was the Elijah who was to come, why did John deny that he was Elijah? What are we to make of this seeming conflict between John's denial and Old Testament prophecies and Christ's affirmation of John's status as Elijah? Friends, it is possible that those who asked John if he was Elijah were trying to see if he would claim to be a reincarnation, something the Old Testament prohibits believing in. Hence, he rightfully denied it. That is to say that he was not literally a reincarnate Elijah, but rather he fulfilled the Elijah prophecy because he came in the spirit and power of Elijah. This is what Jesus meant when he qualified his affirmation of John as Elijah. Jesus spoke of John only in terms of his role and mission 
for he was the very one to give direct witness to the Messiah. Finally, they asked John if he were the prophet promised by Moses that God would raise up a prophet like himself, which he also denied. Friends, it is worth noting here that John declared that he was not the prophet even though he was called a prophet by his father Zechariah in a song of praise to God for the birth of his son. You, my child, will be called a prophet of the Most High, for you will go on before the Lord to prepare the way for him. Friends, when John said he was neither the Messiah nor Elijah nor the prophet, the priest further demanded to be told who he was. This time he answered by quoting the prophet Isaiah, I am the voice of the one crying out in the desert, make straight the way of the Lord. Friends, the people hearing this prophecy would have understood it as making a path for the Messiah. But some Pharisees in the delegation were still not satisfied with the John's answer. They asked him why he baptized if he was not the Messiah or Elijah or the prophet. In other words, they wanted to know by what authority he was preaching and baptizing people, for it is written in the book of Ezekiel that the Lord saying to the people of Israel, I shall pour pure water over you, and you shall be made clean, cleansed from the defilement of your all your idols. Friends, the people interpreted such verses from their scriptures to mean that the baptism should be one of the marks of Messiah's work. No one less than the Christ or Elijah or the prophet could enact such a right. But here John had assumed their power and yet he was denying that he was any of them. Friends, at this point John could have gone into a lengthy discussion of himself and his role as the baptizer. But again his reply with regard to himself was as brief as possible. He directed people's attention squarely on Christ and not on himself. He said, I baptize you with the water, but there is one among you whom you do not recognize, the one who is coming after me, whose sandal strap I am not worthy to untie. That is, he baptized them with the mere water as an outward sign of repentance and thereafter to receive all the spiritual blessings from the Messiah who was in the midst of them, though they knew him not, and for whom he was unworthy to render the lowliest service. Friends, unloosing or untying sandals of the master was one of the lowliest services done by a servant. Hence, John was emphasizing that he was merely an instrument of the living God. He was there to only help them recognize and believe in the God who was already amidst them. In denying being the Messiah or Elijah or the prophet, John was honoring the Lord Jesus for whom alone these titles are reserved. Friends, what is the message for us? The Jewish religious leaders of Jesus' time had a great respect for all of the teachings and traditions, including holy scriptures, which had been handed down from the time of Moses. They diligently studied meticulously interpreted and zealously preserved every bit of scripture, but lacked the insight and wisdom to comprehend God's purposes, particularly the coming of the Messiah. Hence, God sent prophets like the John the Baptist who interpreted his word and including the things concerning the Messiah and called the people to respond faithfully to God who was revealing himself in their history. Friends, today the church plays a prophet's role. Here the church is the reference to the Pope, bishops, priests, catechists, parents and all brothers and sisters who teach God's law. As a matter of fact, every one of us has a calling to be prophetic, to be prophets, that is, to speak on behalf of God and God's truth. We are the voice for God's presence in our world to explain the scriptures, or to instruct one another in the faith, to warn one another of our sins, and to call on one another to transform our lives and to seek His mercy and forgiveness. 
Our work is to point to Jesus, to testify to the light, give testimony to Jesus' name. Friends, we do all these not to draw glory, honor and recognition to ourselves, but to our Master, the Lord Jesus. Friends, as we look forward to the coming of our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, 1. Let us give thanks to God for the Pope, Bishops, Priests, Deacons and countless men and women who give of themselves as heralds of the Word so that others might also know about Jesus Christ, believe in Him and be saved. 2. Let us take up the work of God joyfully and unitedly, proclaiming as one voice the message of warning and salvation. 3. Let us listen and give heed to the messages and revelations given to these men and women of the Church with humble and thankful hearts. Amen. God bless you.